What's going on fishing buddies? Welcome back to the channel. Beautiful Gulf Shores, Alabama this morning. Something different for you guys. I am running a surf fishing lesson today. So I'm gonna go over exactly how these lessons go down. So I'm gonna record the whole thing so you'll see exactly what you get with my surf fishing lessons. Let's get it out there. All right guys, at this point, we're just going over gear, seeing what my friend Scott here has. Kind of eliminating some stuff, bringing stuff, really going over the full gambit of what you need and don't need out there surf fishing. One of the most important things and hardest thing with surf fishing is getting that cast down, y'all. That will make or break you out here. So right now we're just getting lines in the water to fish while we're doing this and then we're going to actually practice our casting on the sand all right guys getting lines in the water All right, guys, at this point, we got lines in the water. We have two 10-footers out, an 11-footer and an 8-footer. We're working different columns of the water. We got two out deep, one mid-range, and that 8-foot rod, we got him right off the beach. Now I'm going to go over gear with Scott, really show him how to add things to his arsenal. Right now, he's fishing two 10-footers with 5,000 series reels, which are great surf fishing rods, but he can't add to the collection. So this is your standard, everyday Pompano setup. This is an 11 foot Ninja Dagger. Matt Poole, the owner and operator of Ninja, he has created these. These are like, he hit the sweet spot with these rods as far as Pompano. You can throw, I think, up to seven on these guys. Yeah, so they go two to seven, right? So you Big can- Big range. Yes, yeah, so you can strap on a seven ounce weight if needed but again the panhandle if you're using four ounce spudniks and it ain't holding it's time to time to pack it up moving into your big boy rod this is a 12 foot this is what i call my drum rods and i got two of these so two identical rods this is what i'm targeting drum with you can use these for pompano also and we got one on okay here we go ready ready stop stop reel down reel down reel down reel down stop reeling pull up you're pulling into the beach, not reeling it. Reel down, reel down, stop, pull up. There you go. You're keeping tension on the line. He's running to the side on you, walk with him. Walk with him. There you go, buddy. I think so. Yep, you got it. You're clear, you're clear. Pompano will run to the side, so that's a great sign. Blue runners will run to the side too, though. <laughs> there you go, what do we got here? What do we got here? Get him up, buddy. There he is. There he is. Pompano, baby. Pompano, and that is going to be a keeper. Look at there. Something got him. That's going to be a keeper in Alabama, boys and girls. Oh, another one's going off. Get that in the sand spike. Another one's going off. First rod. First rod. Out deep. Out deep. <laughs> We're going off now, guys. Alabama, we can keep three, but we have two licensed anglers. So we can keep six. I think you're gonna get, no, 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 no. Yep, yep, go over. You're right. Stay in front of him. Keep the tension on him. He's taking you down the beach. We got another pomp on. Yeah. Keep that tension on him. There you go. Nice. Nice, another keeper. We had a school come through. Two nice pomp back to back, guys. Both of those rods were out deep. One had our fish taco rig on it, the Panhandle Salt Fish Taco, single drop, two green beads. And the other was our standard Panhandle Salt Rig, float on top, three beads on bottom. That was the chartreuse in white. All right, we gotta get these right back out. Surf fishing lessons, baby. And catch a fish, always a plus. We had both these rods out deep. They hit two completely different baits, fish bites only. One was sand flea, one was the green shrimp. 
Little Rod just went off. It's raining. <laughs> there we go. Little whiting, dude. That's a good one. All right. <laughs> and another one. Another one, buddy. We, ain't, he's we, no, he's off. Oh no. So we did get a nice keeper size whiting, but we are gonna use him for cut bait. Just so I can get my client out here with some practice with the big rod, throwing cut bait. It's a different setup. And if something big gets on it, I can show him drag play. That is so important with big fish guys is be able to adjust your drag as needed to be able to get that guy in, not breaking him off. You don't want to break these guys off and then the hook in their mouth, the weight and all that, eventually it's going to kill them. So this guy will be sacrificed today for the good of the trip. It's on, guys. <laughs> okay. We are on. All right. Hold on. See what he's doing. There you go. Let him run. Let him run. Let him run. All right. Start working on him. Reel down. All right. Let him run. When you start hearing that drag scream, just let him go. All right. Remember, follow your line. He's kind of taking you to the side a little bit. There you go. We already got this rod up. I can move it for you. Watch that sand spike. There you go, buddy. All right, he's going back the other way. <laughs> there he is. There he is. All right. Get him up close. Get him up close. Where we at? There we go. Little shark. There he is. Nice. Showing my client how to get these guys off safely. There you go. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. My client follows directions, was able to get that shark in. We showed him how to get him off safely. Watch out, he's coming back on you. <laughs> and the shark will live to fight another day. Working on casting. We'll follow the line down. We got a target out here. My client's body position was wrong. I think that's why he was cutting right or left. Here's our target. His line is right in the target. The distance doesn't matter right now. We're just trying to get this guy near the bucket and he's got it. So what was happening guys, is my client was facing the target, chest to the target and casting. That will definitely make you sling right or left. Plus our body's natural reaction is to stay safe. <laughs> when you got lead and hooks flying by your face, you want to look at it to make sure, and it makes your body cut to the side with your cast. Like you're not pulling it over the top of your head. Your natural defense is to get it away from your head. That will make you cut right or left. But by positioning your body like you're about to throw a baseball, get those eyes and those reels facing straight up to the sky and coming right over the top of your head that will give you a straight cast. Find the line. There's our target. Weight is here. So weight, there's the bucket. That's not bad at all. If this was a hole, he would be in it. So he's three for three now after repositioning his body. The, the distance doesn't matter. Okay. Right? So pull okay. it in. See where I'm at? Yep. Cutting to the right a little bit still, but again, not so much that it's going to matter. What we're trying to avoid here is crossing lines when we're casting. So you have four sand spikes out with the rods. You don't want to be casting and crossing your lines because sometimes you won't even notice it. But then when a fish gets on, it's a disaster. Okay, where you at? I didn't see where it hit, but, uh, it's, but it's straight. It's straight. Okay, hold it right there. All right, we are straight. I want to see how close he got to the bucket. And he is right on it, guys. You're right on it, bro. Look. There's our weight. There's our bucket. He came so close to that bucket. That's a money shot, guys. At this point, we're going to reel up all our lines 
and let Scott cast them out and see if he can do it without crossing. Good. Straight out, right in front of him with a short cast. So go long with this one. Put that butt into it. Didn't get so, as long as I was. That's okay, straight out in front. Not quite as long as we wanted, but that's okay. Cause we got two more rides to deal with. There you go. Perfect. We are set back up. No lines are crossed. Everything's straight in front of the sand spikes. That's how you want to be fishing. At this point, we're going to leapfrog. Show my client the importance of not bringing a chair. <laughs> when the bite turns off, you got to move up and down the beach, guys. You don't have to go as far as packing up and getting in the truck. Sometimes you do, but you will be surprised by just moving left or right down the beach. You'll start picking up fish again. Big rods on again, guys. Oh, buddy. Woo! <laughs> Working. Let him run if he wants to run. Screaming the drag. Yep. He's getting closer. Yep. Big old piece of cut whiting, guys. Here, walk with him, walk with him. There you go. There we go. Look at that rod. Oh, he's running again. He's running again. <laughs> we got him close again, guys. There he is. There he is. Oh, yeah. There's the line. Oh, yeah. About the same size as the last one. Fun, fun, fun. Some shark infested waters here in Alabama, y'all. So we've gone over gear. We've gone over a lot of gear off camera. Beach cart upgrades, different rods, different reels for different occasions, different size braid, leaders. We've gone over fishing apps. So fish rules is something I suggested to my client to be able to identify fish and know their regulations. Species called today, Pompano, Whiting, Blue Runners, Sharks. So he got some good practice with different size fish that bite differently. The Pompano is gonna run up and down the beach on you. They're one of the only fish and Blue Runners that once they start getting close to shore, they cut east or west. Two sharks now we've got on the beach by playing with drag. It's super important when you got those big fish on, not just to be like muscling it in, you're gonna break him off. On again. That's a Pompano set up. Let's get over here. We had that one out deep. It is picking back up, guys. He's running with you. Walk with him, walk with him. There you go. There you go. Stay in front of that guy. Come on. It's either a pop or a blue runner. Little drag pull there. There we go. Big pop, biggest one of the day, guys. Woo! Biggest one of the day, guys. Again, bite died. We waited it out, did some leapfrogging, showed my client all about that, not to get stuck in one spot, and we're able to get on them again. All right, guys, wrapping this thing up. That's what a surf fishing lesson with me looks like. They are all tailored to the client, meaning different skill sets. There's guys that are experienced fishermen that just want to learn to surf. There's people who have never fished a day in their life, so those are more detailed. But my client today was an experienced fisherman. He's kayak fishing, surf fishing, a lot of freshwater stuff though. He just wanted to hone in his skills in the surf. They do own some property here in Gulf Shores, so they come down here a lot. A lot of going over gear today also, wanting to beef up his arsenal, making sure what he already had is gonna work, beach cart upgrades, things like that. So at this point, at the end of the trip, I get home, I will send my client an email, kind of a recap of everything we've gone through, um, links to sites that he can get gear from, local tackle shops that have some of the gear, and get my man set up to be successful out here. If you're looking to book a guide or a lesson in the Perdido Key, Orange Beach, or Pensacola area, you can find all my rates and information at perditoblaine.com. The link is in the description of this video. Alabama limit today, baby. I'm out of here. Till next time.